Welcome to the news. Two news stories by me. I don't know what he's going to say, and he doesn't know what I'm going to say. Eric, would you like to start us off? Kick off the news All for right. us. The first news article that we have is called Plaza Regret. The Hotel Plaza, which has turned into condos uh, back in 2008, and it is talking about how the price point that people paid back in 2008 are higher than what they can get today. So it detailed a lot of the uh, history of the Plaza conversion, where there are residences and, you know, that dream of owning in the best location right off Central Park, you know, the Plaza Hotel was a great sale back in 2008 when people were buying it. But then now owners are struggling to find uh, purchasers for their plaza. Their, their maintenances are very high and there's super tall inventory that's all over the place. Yeah. So as much as I, you know, there's an allure to living at the plaza. I mean, I understand why they purchased back in the day. You, you would think that would be like the most desirable landmarked property. Uh, however, you know, read the comments as well as uh, reasons why you wouldn't want to buy. <laughs> uh, well, thinking about, yeah, Weird. yeah, that is negative, oh. it's surprising. Uh, Can you rent it out, probably. like short term, and the plaza treats it as a hotel and you get rental income? Probably. Anyway, the funny part about this article was that there was a group of people who have theirs on the market, a nice couple from Florida. Very nice couple. It. You know, they made it sound like, oh, you know, this is a great little idea for $14 million <laughs> back in uh, in the early 2000s. And they have it on the market now for about the same. And it was funny. So I was like, who are these people? I looked them up online. And the first article that came up was an article from 2008 about what a great purchase they made <laughs> back in the New York <laughs> Times. So it, it was a cool dream. They had, a, yep. had to, you know, how fitting this. Well, they probably used it if they had it that much, that long of a time for ownership. You yeah. Know, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't keep it for, you said 2008? Yeah. You wouldn't keep it for 15 years unless you were actually going to use it. The hefty commissions of the real estate industry is changing. NAR has lost the lawsuit. It's going to appeals. They didn't know the commissions that the seller was paying was kind of a monopoly, as they were saying. It was a monopoly by NAR to put up a price of 6%, 5%, 7%, whatever it is, and that they had a monopoly over that. They were awarded $1.79 billion in damages. Not a bad beta, you know. That's, that triggered uh, Missouri, South Carolina, New York, Illinois, and the great country of Texas to also <laughs> have their homes or their monopoly, which would be whatever their boards are, their local boards to be sued. Rebney, which is the real estate board in New York, announced that there is gonna be a bifurcation of the commission from the seller. The seller pays it to the buyer, the seller pays it to the seller's agent. Before it was from the seller's agent commission that the buyer's agent was paid. What do you think of that? 6%, do you have any other questions? <laughs> in the article, they literally, this is from Yahoo too, and they had like, 3,000 comments, so of course, they were all positive. 88% of the sellers listed it with an agent, so 12% listed it on their own last year. They don't have the statistic. I looked up that stat. In 1990, it was 10%, and then in 2010, it was 12%. So the amount of for sale by owners has not changed in 30 years, That's which impressive. is really funny. With all this technology, so it'll be interesting how it goes. There'll probably be obviously a decision. No one's gonna wait two years and pay all these attorneys, which ironically enough is paid out of the commission from the real estate board. Yeah, the echo chamber of real estate agents commenting back and forth about all of this commission structure has been a nice, if you crazy distraction. Give good value, then you get good value. If you are not, then you're not gonna get paid. That's the market. That's pretty much how it goes. The other article, where is it? I can continue if you'd like. Nope, this All right. title speaks for itself. Because I was on the Plaza Hotel, then I got a little interested in the Central Park and all that. And uh, it's uh, found this good article, so it isn't recent. It's actually from October 20th. A little bit like a month old. Uh, no. Same with your you know, commission. That's no, no. A $75 million Manhattan condo sale 
shows the power of a Central Park address. It's not on 57th. The sellers paid $55.5 million for the 45th floor at 220 Central Park South only four years ago. Thoughts? Hold on, what? They so paid, they just sold it for 79 and they bought it for 55? 75. They've made $20 million in four years on the investment. Wow. Yeah. So they bought right. it for 55, sold it for 75. I 70 forgive you for giving such an ago. old article to the news when we're almost in December, because that is wild. It goes to show what the whole article is about is that not all billionaires row is created equal. Yeah. <laughs> you really want to have that central park address because there are- And view. Yep, and the view. But there are super tall buildings with the view of Central Park. That's right. But it does not have that Central Park address. Yep. So the Central Park address where you can walk, walk out your front door right onto Central Park is a big game changer in terms of price. So yeah, I thought that was a really interesting article and goes to show the strength of the market for unique apartments that people want. That's Robert Ray. Yep. Yeah. And you know, they did mention 15 Central Park West. And, also by him. Uh, yep, which is also by him. That's the reason I bring that up is because that's actually on, you know, they used the Central Park West address. It is on Central Park, but it goes to show that was one of the hottest buildings ever. In fact, by far. of course, they mentioned Ken Griffin buying the uh, yes. record selling deal at 220 Central Park South. What many people don't know is that he was an owner at 15 Central Park West and went over there to buy at 220. And he paid 250? Something like that. <laughs> so what's your article, Charles? My article is actually what we call in uh, stand-up a callback. So the bank of signature, I did once. Hmm. I only heard silence. So, and I used Louis CK's jokes. Uh, so I stole someone else's jokes. Clearly my delivery was not as good as him. And Signature Bank closed and they were selling off their $17 billion portfolio of commercial property. Guess who is in the lead to buy it? It starts with a B and it ends in a stone. So they said that they are in the lead. So right now it's who can send and cash the biggest checks right now. There's gonna be a lot of dinner reservations being made in the near future. <laughs> a lot of suitcases with cash being, because uh, this is up to, so the FDIC was seeking buyers for $33 million of the entire portfolio of Signature Bank, which is their commercial real estate portfolio, and 17 billion, according to Reuters, was saying that Blackstone was in the lead. It's nice to see that there might be competition because Blackstone pretty much owns everything. So that'd be very interesting which way they go. Obviously, every bank is buying for this. This is pennies on the dollar that they're gonna be uh, buying this at. So it'll be very interesting. And I have a little bonus on that. Um, mortgage applications actually are higher, ironically enough. So they're lower than last year at the same, at the same month. However, it's higher than last month. So that's just a little small thing. So everyone's saying no one's buying. They are buying. They're actually buying at a higher application, which means financing, not cash, not seller financing, not the creative ways to buy. So it's up from last month, from October. That's the end of the news. Well, if you're relocating to New York City, we have not only the best 150 properties that are not on the market, but we can definitely steer you in the direction to buy or invest in the right neighborhood. Send us an email, it's in the description. Of course, subscribe, like, comment, and we'll see you next week. Have a great day and we'll talk to you